Freddie Roach weighed in on Askren versus Paul. And this was pretty hot take for me because Freddie Roach said, I refer to Jake Paul as the YouTube boob. And after Ben Askren knocks him out, he'll get a whole lot of views for that clip on YouTube. Now, I got to tell you, in the world of disdain, too strong a language maybe, in the world of bothered by, I don't know if I've ever seen Freddie Roach like this. Even with those two lines I just told you, I don't know if I've ever seen Freddie Roach speak about an opponent of one of his athletes like that. And before you go, well, Chael, that wasn't all that strong a language. I, I get it. I, I agreed that it wasn't. I'm just saying I've never seen Freddie ever speak of somebody like that. Call him a boob. Oh, Freddie went further. He said, I've tried to watch this guy's fights. He's so bad, I can't watch for very long. And then he talked about Askren. And Askren did a week out there. Now, he might have done two. He might have done three. But I know he did a week out there. I know he did this because I was going to go in and film him. At the wild card, that's what I'm talking about. And Freddie Roach said, when Askren showed up, he showed up in shape. He worked hard the whole time. We did a full workout and sparring on the very first day. I would love to have seen that. I would love to know who he was sparring with only because no slouch would even walk through the door of the wild card. You just wouldn't do it. You'd be too intimidated. Great fighters are too intimidated to walk through the door. They just work too hard in there. They're known for how hard they work. Oh, and by the way, if you're going to spar, you're going to spar with some studs. And the mere fact that Freddie Roach watched Askren do that, I don't know who Askren went with, but I don't need to know. If they're in the wild card gym, and Freddie allows them to suit up and get in the ring, they're good. They're, period. Period. That's a blanket statement by me. 100% true statement, though, also. Now, I think that tells us a lot about Ben Askren, and I think that tells us a lot more about Ben Askren than we knew. One of my concerns with Ben, in all fairness, I've never voiced this, but in all fairness, was I knew he was coming off a hip replacement. I knew that he's running a wrestling academy, but it shut down because of the pandemic. I don't know how good a shape he was going to be in. He was going to start training for this 12 weeks before the fight, but he was going to spend the first two weeks just getting into shape. He had to train just so he could train. He had to work out so that he could train. I'll tell you one word that gets misused in this sport is train. Training, just so you understand, is when you eat, sleep, and breathe an event. I hear the MMA community call train. They'll call practice training. It's not the same thing. A workout is not training. A lift and a jog is not training. I mean, I could go through the list. Don't tell me you're training because you showed up to a, a matted room and broke a sweat one day. That's called practice. And before practice, is called working out. You got to work out to be ready for practice. You got to practice to be ready to train. I only bring that to you because Ben thought it would take about two weeks to get back in. I remember when Ben told me this. Oh, yeah, yeah, Ben. Yeah, right. I remember thinking, Ben, not at your age. The rules, the rules are different for you. It would have taken you two weeks back when you were a college athlete. You'd have done two a days in college just by example. You come off of summer break. You're going to meet in the morning. You're going to do a run, nice long run one day a week. You're going to do some stadiums. You're going to do some sprints. You're going to do a different run every single day. Then you go in in the afternoon, and you're going to wrestle on the mat. That's what you'll do, and you'll spend two weeks doing it. That's how you get in shape. Every college in the country is the same. Then after that, it's full bore, and the coach is going to run practices. But I only share that with you because, yes, the two-week gimmick Ben could have done 20 years ago. So I know when Ben went to wild card, it was only four weeks into this preparation process. So for Freddie Roach to say Ben showed up in shape on day one, for a guy like me that's betting the house, I'm not only betting the house, guys, I'm betting reputation. I do this for a living. I never needed to say that. I never needed to say I, I, I will put my reputation on the line. I didn't have to say anything. All I got to say is I'm picking Ben Askren. I get him wrong all the time, right? I mean, it's just a pick. It's just a guess. Who do you think is going to win? Well, let me give you my guess. My guess is pretty good because I can base it on history because I follow and study and understand the sport, and I happen to remember these things. However, I've chosen on my own accord to go further. I have chosen to publicly come out and tell you guys that, yes, this one will be reputation-based. I will not come to you as the smartest guy in the room if I get this one wrong. There is no reason for me to say that, but I want to say it. I want to go all in. I am in on this journey. I don't care what you did in a practice room or what you did with, with other YouTube stars. 
This is a Hodge Trophy winner from the sport of wrestling of which I have devoted my life. I will be devastated if I get this one wrong, but I will also be stunned. Stunned. Because I don't think these boys are going to box. I think they're going to compete. And I've really only got one complaint on Ben Askren, by the way. Watching him do his open workout video on Wednesday, a lot faster than I remember Ben Askren. Conditioning was always there. I mean, right, he was always there. He was on the mess. I don't love his head movement. If I had any complaint on Ben Askren, I don't love his head movement, and I also don't like that he keeps his hands down low. It's as though he just can't. You'll meet guys like this. They just can't put their hands up. You'll yell to them in practice, put your hands up, they'll put them up. Put your hands up, and they'll put them up. Put your hands up, and they'll put them up. Hands up so you guys understand is not the Mike Tyson where they sit right below your chin and you let the glove do the rest of the work. Hands up means if you were to bring them straight in, they touch your eyebrows. Just so you guys understand, if anybody ever yells hands up, this is hands up. Now your hands could be out, but if you were to bring them back, they touch your eyebrows. If they touch anywhere else, your hands are down and bends are way down here. My only complaints, I'd like to see more head movement. We're not going to get that, right? I mean, the fight, we're hours away. We're not going to get head movement. But the hands up is something we can change on the spot. The hands up is something we can change. And even in MMA, Ben's hands were down. Now, the boxing glove is going to help him out about two and a half inches. So if he could just listen to old Chael, lift him another two inches on his own. I only need two inches, Ben. I'm only asking you for two inches. The gloves will do the other three. Bob's your uncle. Off we go. Australian saying, stole that from the Parson family. But I got to tell you. I don't have any other reservations. I'm with Freddie Roach on this one. And the fact that Freddie is telling us that he can hardly even stand to watch Paul because he didn't consider it boxing. And he's telling us that Ben showed up in shape at a full workout and smart on the first day. Yeah, I went pretty deep on this one. I got a, I got a whole day to take it back. Say the deal's off. Saw something I didn't know about. Reputation's no longer on the line. It's the final video I'm going to bring to you prior to this contest and that I'm going to call this contest live right here on YouTube. I stand by my statement.